Welcome back to the future of photography. I'm Chris and with us, uh, with me, <laughs> with me is Adrian, <laughs> Imar and Jeremiah. Good, uh, good day. How are you? Good how are you guys day. doing? Did yeah, you notice how I, okay. how I eloquently avoided saying good morning? <laughs> we are. Sounds smart. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> um, episode, let me check, 145, time flies, 145, uh, 10 years from now, we are back in our series of um, wild... The future of photography. The future, wi or, or wild speculation about photography. and Yeah, love a bit of that. Yep, and uh, the one topic that um, we want to discuss today is presentation. Jeremiah, you had a few thoughts about that so uh, take I, it away. I, I did i probably have more thoughts than are safe to express but uh, i will attempt to do so <laughs> um <laughs> you know as 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 we kind of move forward in time we we often talk about our cameras we talk about social media processing imagery and all of the artificial intelligence that are and can be useful in terms of capturing, making, and creating images. But at the end of the day, the most important thing is that people get to experience these images. And no matter how sophisticated or lack thereof in terms of our equipment, um, we as photographers, creators, artists, um, feel a need, uh, I think I speak for all millions of us, uh, to actually uh, let our work um, infiltrate the cultural um, zeitgeist of the world. And, and we do this in different ways. The more traditional ways have been paper, um, paper or metal. Th those uh, traditionally ha have been the way that uh, photographers have presented their work. Um, and they're often framed. Uh, they're often matted and behind glass. Now we see them. Um, in Daguerre's time, the actual object of a daguerreotype was um, closer to jewelry or memento or safekeep. Um, that uh, that was uh, an object as much as it was uh, an image. Uh, but as we look forward, we see um, spectacular um, advances in ways that uh, photography uh, can be presented and shown and how that will affect uh, not only uh, the image response, but also uh, architecture, um, interior and exterior design. Um, how we are able to both experience books and create books um, and uh, fashion as well. So um, I'll be touching on some of these, hopefully with, um, with a little bit of insight. Uh, one of the first things I wanted to discuss was the um, advancement in what we call micro LED panels. Um, these are light panels. They're generally manufactured, say, one or two meters square, or actually feet That's square, big. so maybe one meter, mm. um, one foot square to, uh, they range, but they snap together almost like Legos and different companies are making different kinds. Uh, each of these um, LEDs could represent a pixel. And as these um, screens, these, these blocks of LEDs become more and more uh, compressed, in other words, they make them, uh, the LEDs smaller and smaller, you have the pixel density on the screen uh, giving the a, illusion of sharpness. And we all know the new, um, if you've been to uh, a you know, a soccer match or football game here um, with these massive screens and you sitting in the stands, those of us who can remember way back when that <laughs> was happening, um, you saw, you saw um, images that felt as if they were televisions. I mean, they were absolutely tack sharp. Well, now uh, these things are becoming even sharper. Um, so are we are we talking about um, panels that I mean I we kind of know where where this is going where they are being used right now but mm -hmm. is is that is that stuff that we will also at one point see back in our homes like an entire wall just being micro LED yes. walls 
Th- this is where I'm going. Yes, I think is, that, it, that does it look seamless? Like between the panels, it does look it, seamless. It does yeah. it? Wow, it looks seamless. Yeah. Uh, here in like in Santa Monica, there's an Apple store, and I think they they have kind of making these in Apple stores, certainly the ones that I've seen in California, with one wall is a massive, massive screen that they use for their instruction. And, they and look, also advertising. And they look better than they, the LED walls that we used to see and on the side of like billboards and stuff. They look absolutely dazzling. And when you yeah. walk into the uh, store, you could actually say, that's the biggest television I've ever seen. Yeah. Only when you get very, very close. And by close, I mean... You know, less than a meter uh, mm-hmm. that you can start to see the actual LEDs and how they're made. But as soon as you step out, um, obviously the brain wants to converge them and, and it does work uh, very well. But we are going to see um, elements interior once they get that sharp um, so that we can have an entire wall that is a architectural element uh, that will be a fixed or... Uh, or changeable image, and these things can be changed from our devices, our iOS devices, our Android devices, our computers. Um, that's going to be a very, very different experience than looking at a, uh, a photograph in one's hand or even framed and matted on a wall. Um, of course, the the impact of these things is going to be... Um, the size and scale of these images. Not all images work on that big scale. On the other hand, uh, it's possible instead of hanging several uh, photographs on a wall, maybe you just put up the panels and have several images (coughs) matted in. I have a Samsung television uh, in my home that has a wood frame and uh, there is a uh, an app within the television so that when you are not actually watching television, um, for those of us who do watch television, no names <laughs> mentioned here, um, that, that I can actually, by subscribing, it's very, very cheap. It's like $3 a month mm. um, to various galleries all around the world. Um, okay. And I can pull beautiful HD or you know 4K representations of images, paintings, drawings on the screen, which is non-glossy, and actually mm-hmm. uh, have them matted. And I've had people come in to my living room and go, oh my God, that's Chagall. It looks so beautiful. Because you can actually see the paper quality on oh, wow. it. That's amazing. And yet it's a television. It doesn't look like a television when oh, it's off. Wow. It looks like a framed image. And just so that that's just a hint of what's coming on these LEDs. I do like the, the, other... the idea of that, Jeremiah. Um, did you know that the, the Google Chromecast kind of does that as well? And I do have one of those, even though I don't watch TV because I like to cast a, a movie or whatever. And I, I have actually got um, taken away just watching the kind of Google Earth images and you can select what you sure. want to see and it just rotates every minute and it's mesmerizing. Absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. It's what like being you, in a dentist's office. But what effect do you think <laughs> that that kind of thing is going to have on the cinema? I'd be worried. Um, no, um, no. I, I, I don't think so. First of all, you know, cinema, we'll call it cinema, TV, storytelling, mm. small, large, long, short. Mm. They're really about characters uh, and story. And, and how one presents that is almost, mm. um, I think, irrelevant. So a, a, a projection with, might go away and will might be replaced by these kind of screens. Yeah. Without, the, without I, question. I kind of mean the experience of going to the cinema. You know, I, oh, I, I think that's on its way out. Yeah. Yeah, anyway, completely. I think I've I've read certainly that I think that uh, somebody did a survey, and, and I'll probably get the details of this wrong, but I have read recently that somebody did a survey about the changing attitudes of people in the way they want to consume, uh, for want of a better term, premiere movies or movie mm. premieres. Maybe is a better way around of putting it. And I think mm-hmm. people are now starting to say because the in-home technology is so good and because of the constraints of going to a movie theatre right mm-hmm. now and, and how that, uh, that they actually would prefer to watch movie premieres at home uh, rather than go out uh, and enjoy I speak that for myself. 
I mean, uh, that, I, mean I mean just just a simple ahead. fact that that's uh, something like YouTube for example is offering to premiere uh, a, a video that you put up there or a movie that you put up there and that means that a lot of people will come together at the same time to watch it at yeah. the same time and they Is have Is that a, what that's about? Yes, yeah. and they have a chat and then that's a that's a community mm. experience all of a sudden as opposed to be the uh, an alone at home kind of experience. That's mm. what a that's, what a YouTube premiere is. That's um, interesting because mm. I've seen a few things come up and say premiere and it has yes. a time and a date. Mm. It's like yes. like a live stream has a time and a date when it'll yeah. go live. And these are pre-produced um, uh, things, pre-recorded things, things that yes. are then premiered and usually the people who made it who are in it uh, the 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 stars in quotes those are also present in the chat and so you have this mm. uh everyone is watching it together kind of experience mm. ah. the, yeah the, there's there's a a lot of threads to take off uh, before we get completely off topic but but just <laughs> to, to say that <laughs> we always do um <laughs> that that there are some experiences cinematically that are unquestionably so much more powerful in a crowd and that's a comedy mm. um often mm -hmm. a horror film where you're just sharing the energy and the dynamics mm. on on a dramatic piece uh which it may be a little more literary mm. uh the experience of watching it by yourself or in a crowd i think is is pretty much the mm. same um people uh having been used to watching a lot on their devices uh, or at home on their even on their television have gotten progressively more rude and noisy um, in movie theaters which is very disrespectful for mm. the filmmakers and causes a lot of consternation for those who go to the theaters when we did mm. uh, for people who are you know texting and the lights on or mm. talking and I um, unless um, Unless a movie is really dramatically made for a big screen, and, and many are, Christopher mm. Nolan's new feature, I don't want to watch it on a small device. I want this big. Mm. Um, whether or not I'll be able to, I, I don't know yet. But, but um, most films, most television, are perfectly suited to what's uh, beginning to be very, very powerful and big sonically and visually uh big screen or moderately uh big screen experiences at home so mm -hmm. as the quality of home viewing uh, becomes cheaper um you're going to see more of that move now in the u.s mulan which is a 200 million dollar mm -hmm. disney film which they were hope hoping to open now uh, they're not going to be able to do it so they're going to put it on disney plus with an uh, a 30 dollar yeah, attachment. yeah I saw that. Now, that se <laughs> seems like no that seems like a lot of money yeah however if you take your family to see mulan yeah. depends yeah. on your benchmark doesn't it yeah you're you're going to spend a lot more than 30 dollars i mean mm. the tickets here are now 17 dollars popcorn parking possibly babysitting uh, mm. so and a, and a so gallon of coke <laughs> yes each, oh, each. Cinema a cola Ouch. a cola yeah. a drum a of cola. popcorn yeah, yeah uh, so it is it, it, it depends on what price uh, or, or what experience you're, you're mm. benchmarking against if your experience is the that's is the, the whole day experience <laughs> yeah. um, you, know. you know that's the, then yeah. the 30 dollars is actually yeah. very affordable um, yeah. if you're comparing it against your two dollar seven, seven dollars or even against even against your seven dollars a month or whatever it is i think it's about six sure. pounds a month here um mm. disney plus subscription yeah. well we're gonna see won't we uh, mm. because this is all we're in an interregnum now and uh the business certainly the business that i find myself in is changing uh radically in terms of uh appetites amounts how it's distributed and that's that is, uh, you know, a subject for another time. But going back to LED panels, because I have a few others to talk about, when these things become weatherproof, which they pretty much are, and really dynamic, you're going to see entire buildings clad in micro LEDs. And if on one side of the building you have a series of stitched cameras, and the other side, you have micro LEDs as a complete 
uh, facade of the building, it is possible to actually make uh, the building appear invisible. Mm -hmm. I think I've make seen that in a movie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> make, or, didn't or, James Bond? Didn't James Bond have an invisible car <laughs> about ten years ago, <laughs> made, uh, on exactly that uh, exactly that premise? I think. I'm sure. Well, it makes sense. <laughs> Did Wonder Woman have an no, invisible airplane? <laughs> <laughs> on. No, that really doesn't. It does not make sense that there are invisible cars. That is the worst. Anything in the Bond world. It's the worst possible thing for a car to be is invisible. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they say uh, light silver, light gray cars get into the most accidents because at, at uh, dusk they become invisible. And mm. more, more yeah. people smash into them, like red cars get pulled over. They're very often. easy to but keep anyway, clean, I on the other hand. <laughs> but, but the use of, of uh, micro-LED panels in, in uh, architectural elements is absolutely fantastic. And I look forward to, um, to the next version um, of architects designing for those things so that the... the the facade itself can be changing based on weather and light and it dynamics. should become a structural element like like some of the solar cells now replace roof tiles as opposed to can being be. put on top mm. of roof tiles so yeah. why, why not build houses out of micro led panels mm. all together anyway so, so that's that's the big one uh you know on the smaller more intimate one you know we've all heard about and experienced electronic paper or e-paper um e-paper is not what I would consider ready for prime time in terms of image making. It's certainly good and sharp enough for reading, but very soon, um, I'm sure in the lab it's already there, but if we can have a sheet of paper, no matter what size, that one could adjust, let's say, just in black and white, a tonal range that's amazing, the texture that's amazing, and have those changes, and yet it feels and looks like paper that will be a real uh, advance i can't imagine that that's not coming up the pike because i'm i'm looking forward to this one this is one of the ones that excites me especially yeah. seeing as they're they're now starting to bring out colored e-paper um yeah. i did this i first did this i had an early kindle um uh, and i still have it somewhere it, I, it, it's long since been replaced with one that, that has a backlight on it but um i this early kindle um the kindles used to come with your own email address and you could yeah. email stuff to your kindle i think they and do still if you emailed uh, a jpeg file for example to your kindle it would appear in your reading list and you could view images on it is now, it, clearly, a very it's coarse, coarsely rendered. <laughs> it was uh, really bad. Pixelated well, black a, and white image. Do you know what? It is. It, it, I don't know. There's something days, about it for me, though. It may not be. The, it may not be the the sharpest, most dynamic range image in the world. Um, but there's something about it that felt a bit different. And you mm. could easily. And for me, anyway, I, I've been I've been hoping for uh e, e paper to 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 get color and to get you know better resolution and what for for 10 years probably nearly um so i'm really looking forward to this and occasionally i still email my my kindle a, a, a jpeg <laughs> and can you just look at them adrian or can you um push them forward and like export them from that mm. so, no, so, so you with that look. i think i think the way it works because you mm. don't have an email inbox on the kindle i think mm. what it does is that the the, the back end amazon systems take take the email they capture the, any attachment on the email okay. and convert that attachment to an item in your reading list okay. so you can have it uh, you could yeah, what it be is you would you would touch on it as you would touch on it to open a book in your reading list except instead of opening a book it would open the photograph, photograph. Or, or whatever image I always found that that quality reminded me of my Fisher Price <laughs> I can't, my movie camera that records on on the uh, audio cassettes, and I still have this. And the image quality is fantastic. I've used actually used it for commercials, intercutting commercials when I really <laughs> wanted to push the levels of you know four K. Use the, game, use the that, Game Boy you know. camera. <laughs> It's yeah, it's, it's, it's very a bit similar. better than the Game Boy. It's very a bit better similar. than the Game Boy. Um, but, uh, but of course, it the, the, the Game Boy camera is at least in part um, uh, held back by the quality of the, 
the camera itself whereas of course mm. this this method with the kindle you can email anything to it anyway sorry i i i taking not not taking us down a rabbit hole as such but i'm focusing on the th the photography of the past what, what's happening in the future jeremiah okay in the future <laughs> so we we talked about e-paper here um i think traditional printing which is uh let's call it um a combination of new dyes and traditional papers and new printers with micro print heads and rips that create uh, some of the most dynamic, subtle color shifts in tone and color are coming down. And that, that's not 10 years away. That's probably five years away from, from a, a print on paper with let's say we're printing color and instead of 12 inks there's 24 inks of course you know how badly these print manufacturers <laughs> want to get there because yeah. if they can sell you 12 <laughs> <laughs> cartridges of ink imagine if they can sell you 24 <laughs> of them now obviously it's not going to be for the home uh, hobbyist but when you're making really beautiful um, subtle and 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 you know, we're always complaining about the difference between, oh, it looks so good on screen and it looks so bad on, on in print, where you can have print actually taking a different tone. It'll always be a little different, but imagine um, the possibilities of significant shifts up in quality of, of inks on traditional papers, both in terms of color fast and, and what will remain. So I think that's coming up. Um, virtual holographic screens, uh, holography, which is something that I've been in, uh, early on in, in, my, in my photographic life. I think we're going to start to see hol holographic images that uh, are no longer gimmicks. When you actually, say virtual, virtual holographic images, you're not talking AR. I'm not talking AR. I'm talking okay. about, for example, uh, we open a book. And you could have a three-dimensional... And Princess Leia uh, comes out, yeah. Yes, uh, <laughs> effectively, amazing. but very, very um, good dynamic range, very sharp. And that's all a question of how the, quote, projection works with uh, light hitting a screen, whether mm. it's a separate page or not. But, but uh, holographic processes are getting more and more sophisticated so that that kind of... AI projection of of imagery or subject could be very very interesting and 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 we could see that instead of having an image of of uh, fruit in a basket um, and the kind of um, dead hair hanging the, the classical still life mm -hmm. uh, we may uh, walk into somebody's house and actually see it on the table perfectly mm. uh, rendered. Uh, uh, perfectly uh, visible, but we could pass our hands through it. And I, I think that's coming. People are working on that. Um, but can, I, can I ask a technical question? What is the medium in, on which it is projecting? Uh, it's not really projecting. It's reflecting. Um, actually, you don't, you know, there, are, there have been projected holograms but holograms are are, are a reflection and, know, and hologra so hologram today is like a like a like an umbrella term for a whole bunch of different technologies right? yeah o originally um when i was uh you know in in my youth and in canada where where you could kind of like chris knows you can you can get the government to give you all kinds of money for <laughs> artistic endeavors um uh, <laughs> me and two of my friends we 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 got the government to buy us a, you know, $100,000 <laughs> red laser. I mean, we were broke. We were, I was living in a cold water studio. <laughs> and we had this, like, incredible laser. And we got a stainless steel vibration-free table that must have been 8 feet by 4 feet by 6 inches deep. I mean, the thing weighed tons. And, uh, and mounted the lasers and we would coat our own uh, emulsion on glass and we would use a beam splitter and that beam splitter would shine some light on the subject which would be in nothing moving it would have to be still and uh, and the plate and we experimented with um, exposure times development once you developed it and shone that laser onto that plate the object would appear just as you saw it 
and some of our work went to the Museum of Modern Art and blah, blah, blah. It's all faded now because <laughs> here we were making our own. Uh, our own. But moving forward, um, holography, I think, or that kind of virtual projection, I think we're going to see that with when the kind of user-friendly glasses uh, start to start to come out and people uh, will continue to make art that you can see uh, with um, augmented reality. So I think that augmented reality is going to be a, a part of the process of kind of the future of photography. Um, I'm going to race through so I don't kind of use up <laughs> too much time here. Um, new lenticulars. Um, lenticular imagery is something that is still, um, I think, associated with bad uh, postcards. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, though, uh, again, to tap my own horn, I, I did a show here in a gallery of, uh, you know, basically 30 by 40 black and white um, lenticulars that were not 3D. They were shifting lenticulars. Mm. So when you stood in front of them, they were matted and... and and framed so that if you just came in and looked at it without moving, you'd say, oh, that's a black and white image. And as soon as you shifted one way or another, you'd see the, the image shift mm -hmm. subtly. So there'd be subtle changes in it and uh, sold out that, that, that um, so, but you know, it's very kind of, you have to be, it's extremely difficult to find good lenticular printers and uh, lenses most important because the, print itself is sliced and diced and you you put lenses on it and that gives the illusion of 3d or shifting imagery i think we're going to see um new lenticulars with, with that that use or project depth maps that are very very interesting so i have to, I have to sort of talk, talk or at least bring up the question of of consumer demand here because um 3d televisions um, the consumer demand just simply wasn't there. Well, um, there's a good reason for that. What is the because reason? Bad 3D movies. And also, <laughs> 3D movies... 3D movies don't really add... And there, there are exceptions that prove the rule. Mm -hmm. But I've seen a bunch, and they're generally gimmicky. They are mm -hmm. distractions mm -hmm. from the actual story and character we are so used to seeing imagery in a flat field that that we don't even recognize that we are watching an abstraction of a story and the closer we kind of fake that it's real i think our brain is always trying to figure out what's the trick we know it's not real and i think we are less compelled to fall into the story mm. so is that is that uh, an equivalent of the uncanny valley effect then in some ways it's a little different um because the uncanny valley is 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 something that that we really if we stopped for a moment in looking at a uh, um, an artificially created human and we look into the eyes of said human our instinct says something is wrong with this even if we're told this is real our instinct this is this is, goes back to our dna of our okay. ability to recognize life as opposed to literature um once we cross over that i mean i don't know we're we're not there yet uh and if we stop for a moment and get conscious about that we can really identify what is bugging us about something we mm -hmm. could really really get down to it but i think in in terms of 3d you know the thing is you're always going to want to get behind the um the you know the head you're going to want to see <laughs> you know it, how you're being tricked um mm. and even you know scorsese's movie uh hugo cabaret which i thought was a fantastic 3d movie it used 3d in such a remarkable way but the entire story was about illusion and reality mm. and all the rest of it so i think it, it it identified something very very specific there's another thing that we often don't talk about which is uh ocular fatigue because remember, when we're watching a 3D movie, our eyes are adjusting constantly, mm. um, and and that uh, creates some fatigue, and that fatigue is also dissociative from our engagement. So, anyway, 
Another. It is interesting because of all these 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 technologies that that you're talking about here through through the the discussion today. The ones that are interesting to me are the ones where there is a, a maturity of a digital technology that better resembles something traditional like a piece mm. of paper. Mm-hmm. Now I don't know why I personally. I mean, this is a very personal thing, but uh, you know, I, I'm you know, I I can imagine that something that that looks holographic i will look out for five minutes and go yeah fine whereas something that you know it is let, let's say it's it's a next generation or next 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 generation electronic paper that is almost indistinguishable from the real thing that can then change your images over time that to me is is very compelling um the the more natural the more the, the less digital it looks mm. the more compelling it is to me so yes but but I can I can challenge back and say using the example of of the a classical still life that responds to the ray tracing or the light within your environment that looks absolutely real and that is a absolutely beautiful sculptural say work of art that is using photographic processes to uh, trick you or or, or uh, create the or, you know complete the illusion when the subject aligns with the technology in a perfect way in your environment you're going to change your mind until I think that I, happens i, th- I think oh. we're agreeing because i think mm. that's the the thing is what you're trying to do with that when you're when you it'll look natural yeah and that's the, uh, and that's i think is is where i'm going with it maybe, maybe i need to mod uh, qualify or modify what i said a moment ago which is that yeah maybe maybe i should say looks natural rather than looks traditional um you know, so that you know, if you if you've got a picture hanging on a wall, it looks like a picture hanging on a wall, not like a a, a phone screen or an iPad hanging on a wall or something. Like well, that. can Just, I? I'll challenge you back, and I'll say, going back to our first micro LED uh, example, if you were looking at a building, a a very very tall building, um, let's say 50, 60 story building, and you were looking at it from you know a block or two away, and that building felt or looked like it was built on massive Roman columns and had stonework and articulated fenestration, etc. And you went, wow, that is kind of, you know, <laughs> you just described <laughs> Caesar's <laughs> palace, <laughs> 50, 50 stories high, you, just did. you know, uh, you would go, that's amazing until you got close to it. But the next day, y- it would look like a, you know, Russian spaceship. You know what I mean? Like, so that's fun. It's, it's fun. And having worked in the city of London, where there are many tall towers, many more now yeah. than there, there, there were even 10, 15 years ago. Um, you know, that, that that's a bit of fun. Yes, definitely. Um, uh, it's yeah well I, well I guess i guess let's see i, I, I suspect that the i suspect that the architects of those buildings would probably you know m- might mourn the loss of their their purity maybe. of vision perhaps <laughs> unless they were involved in designing the imagery around so it. Um, so let me one ask more something. one more example okay, one more okay one, one more and then i have a question and then, then i throw it to the ground <laughs> um i think and this this is a little closer to us in terms of the future i think book printing on demand which is a process right now. Uh, But I think that that is going to be, uh, because I love traditional books. I like books on paper. I like that experience. I think the ability of having super high quality presses that are inexpensive, that have all kinds of of, uh, image extrapolation techniques that are able to emulate what you want very quickly and distribute this in however you want uh, globally is going to be right around the corner. So I think that's also in the near future. Okay. Mm -hmm. So here's my question. Um, A lot of um, what was talked about here is physical things, as in a physical micro LED screen, a physical piece of electronic paper, um some projection yes but um what about ar because i think we're not too far from right now you see everyone looking into a little square in their hand but it's not too far out that we'll be just looking and uh i'm not even talking about 
okay, I'm talking about goggles of some sort, but I'm not talking about intricate 3D things. I'm talking about replacing screens, the screens that we have right now that are everywhere, the surfaces that have pictures on them, as in picture frames, printed stuff. Um, that could all be replaced by virtual things, even shared among people. I mean, that technology is being developed right now. So um, just imagine you have a shared experience. You both, two of you sit on a sofa and you look at the wall at a big, big virtual screen. And um, you both have that shared experience because you're seeing the exact same thing at the same time. Um, something like that is available right now. Um in the virtual world as a com community experience and I'll, uh, I've, I've, I've changed my pick of the week into that so I'll show you that a bit later on. Cool. Uh, that sounds interesting but but how is it different from just having a television? Yeah. What would be on it? <laughs> well, yeah. you can what have, would you, you look at? Well <laughs> you can have a television of any size, any shape, anywhere you like. You could uh, stick this to your kitchen wall and then you walk over to the living room and you just make it appear there or you have 12 screens one in every room <laughs> two in every room <laughs> no. uh, because every no. place can be a screen all so of a sudden wrong. so so you are you, you don't have to have these bulky things in your house anymore just mm -hmm. imagine you're not just you we are looking at screens right now while recording this mm -hmm. just imagine there wouldn't be any screen it would be an empty desk and you'd look still look at bubbles. something that's hovering <laughs> in the air in front of you that's not mm. too far out that's a new yeah, form. It of would be very, um, I imagine, f environmentally friendly in terms of waste oh, and yes. stuff like oh, all yes. those electronics that we don't need to dump anymore. Oh, yes. Look at your wrist, yeah. and do you have a do you have a smartwatch there? But it's not it's not there. No. That kind of stuff. I can see know? I can see the whole minority report. It's not thing there anyway. In my head, <laughs> yeah, you could replace all of the monitors in offices. Yep. Uh, yeah. with, with minority yep. report yep. stuff. Yeah. Uh, you know that you only see, that you only th see through your your yep. own personal projection mechanism. As much as many that. as you like, <laughs> as many as you like. We're going to replace. Offices. I can do this. I can do this right now. I can have a. I I can put on the the Oculus Quest, and in there I can have my screen. The one Won't that I'm looking at right now. Won't do much with the video feed, though, will it? <laughs> Wow. It wouldn't really help that much because you would then see an avatar. You would then see a virtual representation of myself. But I could take this screen with mm -hmm. me. I could go over to the living room, sit on the sofa, and have that screen hover in front of me. Have a keyboard on my lap. There's a movie that Bruce Willis did. What was this that? Where, where I'm talking about lives in reality society. right now. <laughs> where he lives in a society where everybody <laughs> lives at home and they send out their, like, they, they can put their they have like remote robots that look like younger versions of themselves uh what's that movie called miss that well okay, Mrs. It's all, I'm, all I'm talking about me. is replacing yeah. physical screens with virtual screens it's pretty yeah. much what i'm so well, so that, what would be that's the, hard, the glasses where, yeah with glasses yeah okay yeah. I'd, do you know what? I, I, I'm I'm pretty good with faces, but I'm rubbish remembering people's names. So if I could wear a pair of glasses, which would you just want pop my their name names over, <laughs> over my head, well, that'd be quite yeah. useful. You tag yeah. people as you meet them and just have their name pop up then every time you saw them. As long as the <laughs> face recognition worked. <laughs> Ah, well, that's a topic for another day, uh, yeah. isn't it? I, 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 that's what that one in the brewing. I think we do need to do uh, 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 have a conversation. I think we have need to have a conversation about false positives. Mm. Yes. But no, so no. I think it's time for picks, don't you? <laughs> I think it is. Um, Why let's, not? <laughs> let's get started. I'll I'll shamelessly uh, take mine first, and it is big screen VR. That is an experience it's not it's, it's not yeah. actually uh, just an experience it is a virtual cinema that um i, I can i can go over uh, to the, the other room put on my oculus quest or i think pr pretty much any vr headset and start this and then i'm in a cinema and there is other people's avatars next to me and uh, i can watch pictures on the big screen i can choose different styles of cinema so i could have this be like a tiny shoebox size one or a really big one that holds 500 people with a really big screen and the experience is very compelling i mean i'm still talking about a big not so light thing on my head so it's definitely noticeable it doesn't disappear um, but um, we are not too far from a future where 
you you'd have this experience at, at your place back home so uh you can have this virtual big cinema experience um in a community with people around you um throwing popcorn at the screen that's possible <laughs> in there but uh you virtual can disable popcorn. you can disable that you can you can play with the laser pointer and that kind of stuff but then you can disable the others from for the, the other people's popcorn laser pointers showing up in yours so if you want that experience to be like yours without any distractions, without any other people talking. You can talk to each other in there if you want to. And I think this sounds like really clever, clever technology. It feels a bit dystopian to me. In, you you in should try it. That in should well, try no, no, it. I, 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 should, I probably should. You're right yeah. before I yeah. judge it. But but just the, the it reminds me of all the sci-fi movies I've seen, the dystopian sci-fi movies where nobody can go out and everybody lives in tiny shoebox places and, and so there isn't room for a screen. And, you know, uh, it, it seems to me to be a, an isolative thing. But, hey, you know, I, well, I should try it, it before I judge it, certainly. It turns into a community experience as soon as others are in there with you. That's very interesting. Yes. So, mm. who's next? Uh, Adrian, how about you? Okay, okay well, um, I also changed my uh, pick of the week halfway through the conversation. <laughs> so, I don't know if you have my second pick of the week, which is now in the show notes, already queued up to show. Um, but I was thinking about presentation. Um, and I recalled that uh, very recently... Uh, this was one? my Yes, that one. Yes. Very recently, it was my wedding anniversary. And so I ordered as a little present for my wife um, some photographs of our life together printed on marshmallows. Oh, oh my God. Is that good. is crazy. This is really good. So you should check out this company. I will tell you then I will say their name. They're called Boomf. And um, they, they do they do uh, only a few products, actually, but they're all really good fun. They're all about presentation of imagery. Um, and, so, so little uh, square marshmallows that uh, that photos are printed on. Am uh, I yes. getting this right? <laughs> um, little square, uh, yes, and properly edible. Um, so uh, you, you can actually eat them. I have eaten some and I'm still here to tell the tale. So they're definitely <laughs> edible. Um, check out their other products as well in terms of presentation. Uh, um, one, one I particularly like is one that gets delivered as, as a fairly flat thing and it says pull pull here and you pull the tab and it explodes with confetti and then there's a cube <laughs> with your photographs a cardboard cube with your photographs printed on the outside of it and a message and, and stuff like that um it's yeah it's it's good fun it's it's a good fun company good fun products Crazy. anything with marshmallows gotta be <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay jeremiah what is well yeah i have uh you know one of mine is called the it's it's the atmoth store which is it's really selling windows to people who have none <laughs> And uh, <laughs> that's what it is. That's how they're marketing. There are also people who live in dark dwellings or in the basement. Basically, it is a screen, um, I guess you'd call it a screensaver for your wall. Digital so, trompe l'oeil. Yes. <laughs> like so there's your window. Uh, I guess you'd need a fan or something to create a little breeze. But... Um, <laughs> I'm not sure if this is sad or, or, or good, but I thought this is a very uh, unusual way to present photography. It just looks like a monitor to me, but mm. anyway, there you I go. I imagine There's, if you're living in a house like a, with no windows. It looks like, one, it looks like a repurpose of, uh, of, these, of, these, of right. these digital image frames, these digi digital picture frames that were yeah. exactly. all the rage yeah, several years ago. Mm. And they're marketing it as a window. Anyway, yes. so I thought that was uh, just, I don't know why I chose Got it, no but frame, I thought it was it? indicated. That just but reminds the other me of the first, uh, that reminds me of Total Recall. Yeah. <laughs> the Arnold okay. Schwarzenegger okay, version. Adrian, the real, the Adrian, real one, though. The real, what's with your dystopian mindset today? <laughs> I just, I, so, so it is interesting, isn't it? But it genuinely, the, the, I'm finding these things, most of them quite disturbing. <laughs> I don't know why. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, yeah. Imar, what's yeah. your pick of the week? Uh, my pick of the week is now, according to the, the show notes, it's my profile on Flickr, but it's not really my profile on Flickr. So if you just if you click the first photo, um, I'm using the TFOP now hashtag. The and butterfly. Uh, yeah, but if you look at my tags that are on that photo, you'll find um, that TFOP now is one of them just after the title. 
Yeah. So if you click on the TFOP now, that's what I really want to draw attention to. But I didn't know how to um, ah. I didn't know how to share that directly. So I just I'm doing this picture of the day. So I'm trying to do a three six six. So they're all hashtagged with TFOP now. And I was looking at it there and I'm kind of happy with how it's looking. So there's a lot in there. It looks like I'm not doing anything or taking any photos anywhere. But actually I am and they're all in here. Awesome. So. And that is an <laughs> invitation to, to anyone who's listening to participate in that as well. Absolutely. And actually, um, if there are any of my sisters out there listening, I'm totally outnumbered in our new Discord is very male orientated at the moment. So I would absolutely love um, if some more women joined and. Um, so so would I, absolutely. Me too, could, uh, me too. Sure we we need the female eye yeah. to keep us honest absolutely. and keep us focused. Yeah. Help um, Imar. It would I mean, just make things feel a little more balanced in there. It would be brilliant. Let me put all so these we have just on opened, the screen. We, we've just opened our, our Discord. It's um, brand new, but it's already, we already have like, there's like 15 people on there. Uh, right now so it's already uh getting it's growing some and traffic it's, it's growing it's wonderful it's so we're all engaged um, with the people. Imar, there's a lot of where, chat going on in there where should people go take us take us okay to if you show. want to connect with us male or female <laughs> you can visit us at uh, www.futurephotography.com which is the home of the show the original home of the show i would say um we're on twitter at tfop now we're on Instagram at TFOP now, and we're also on Discord, which is on the screen on YouTube if you're watching. But um, I'll let you even, I can't even say that, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> it's too TF, complicated. TTF. TF, so that's tips from the top floor, which is one of your other projects. That's my yeah. link shortener. That's what yeah. I use to, sh to make short links. <laughs> T TF dot com. Yeah. No, no, it's it's in the show notes. We have a, we have a link in the yeah. show notes to that. So um, yeah, join the join the Discord. It's it's a, it's a good place. We have some really great discussions there. We have a showcase channel, so people can show nice photos. Nice to see people putting some stuff in the showcase as well. And not just and showcase I, stuff, but discuss yeah. things. We have had so many yeah. good discussions already. Yeah. I'm going to offer that the hundredth person to join. We'll get a print of mine. I will, oh, oh, I will oh, give oh, them an original oh, print. Oh, that's an incentive. Can I, can I quit print. and rejoin? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I want to do that now. <laughs> no. Oh, <laughs> too bad. Oh, okay. I get your marshmallow. A printed yeah, marshmallow. Yeah, I'll send you a box of marshmallows. Oh, all print of an exploding box of marshmallows. Okay. Uh, I'll everyone, print them on my printer. <laughs> thanks for your time and uh, see you again in a week. Until then, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye. bye. Mm-hmm. <laughs>